describe Johnny. Johnny is our second son. Um, he's a very, usually a uh, very quiet individual, very, um, very uh, much to himself and uh, very successful uh, as he grew up academically. He was good at hockey, he was good at baseball, he was good at track, um, he was good at horse, horseback riding, which I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> I'm from Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Um, I went to Ligonier Valley High School, graduated in 2013, and played for Ligonier Valley's hockey team, and then eventually my senior year played for Greensburg Salem's hockey team. I mean, Johnny started playing hockey about the same time he could walk. Uh, he was about four or five years old, and uh, you know, hockey is a big commitment, a real big commitment. He liked it. I mean, he was he was really good at it. He didn't mind getting up in the morning, at, sometimes at 5 a.m. and going out there. He met a lot of friends on the team. They had a good time together, um, and they just had so much fun doing it. He he, he just uh, he never stopped. He just played for years and never complained about going. But, and he just wanted to go and play hockey. It was fun. My first years playing hockey were for the Westmoreland Eagles, where I spent nine to ten years, and I've been playing ever since for different organizations. Watching players like Yomer Yager, Mario Lemieux, Marty Straka, all those names really got me into the sport. My brother and I, uh, we decided to go to Presbyterian uh, Hospital at UPMC. I was experiencing a lot of pain abdominally. When I went to Presby, they uh, did a CT scan. The doctor at the time, he walked in, uh, his initial reads from the CT scan, he said, I'm fine. And then he came back 15 minutes later and said, the radiologist saw masses in your abdomen and he basically told me I have cancer on the spot. In the shock value, I, I really didn't know what to think. I thought the guy was speaking a different language. My brother got very emotional at the time. I was just more like, what the hell is going on? Well, it, it, in fact, it, um, it affected me in a way that, you know, I wanted to be there for Johnny and be as, as strong as I could for him. You have to kind of go back a couple of years, uh, or maybe about a year and a half before he was actually diagnosed with cancer. We'd just gone through uh, his grandfather, my dad, uh, in 2012. Uh, was diagnosed with cancer, and uh, that was in August of 2012, and he died in December. About four months later, I was diagnosed with cancer, and uh, in October I was treated, and uh, I had I was cancer free. So we were in a very good state in terms of being able to be cancer in my case, and uh, we were just on the road to recovery then, and then we heard that word again, the cancer. Basically, they said that he uh, he might have cancer right away. I mean, they weren't even, and it was just resident. It wasn't even like the regular doctors. And, and I was hoping it was something else. We didn't even get the results for a couple of months. We were just hoping it was not cancer. We just hoped it was just something else, anything. When I was first diagnosed, they didn't know what kind of treatment to put me on, and they, uh, ended up putting me on hyper CVAD, which is very aggressive treatment regimen. And I immediately started that night, basically 24 hours since after I was diagnosed. My whole diagnosis was kind of spread out because they knew I had a lymphoma, but with lymphomas, you need to figure out what kind it is to start treating it, especially with the type I have, because there's no medical consensus in the world on the, for what's a good way to treat it.
just one more question. Mm -hmm. This is just any other things to say about your son? Uh, he's a very, very strong uh, individual, and um, he's, he's fought a very hard battle. Uh, cancer uh, for him has made him a different person, a very different person. It made him stronger. It's made him uh, appreciate a lot of the things that, you know, for a young person at 19, that's how old he was at the time, to have to be faced with that kind of mortality. Um, and he took it like a, very, like a grown man, and he fought very hard, and he continues to fight today. And we're very happy that he's um, about a year and a half, or just a little bit beyond that in remission. So, very strong that way. I'll tell you what, though. It's just, I don't know, it's devastating. It's devastating, but I, I don't even think about it anymore because I'm so glad that he's better <laughs> right now that he's got two years of remission and I'm really thankful. But through faith, my family and my friends, I really look to them for support and they're really the ones, are, they're the reasons why I'm here today. And for kids who are going through this, I want them to know that they're not alone and that there's always something out there. And don't find yourself, don't crawl into the bed in the corner of the room and just sit there, don't give up. Like I, when, I, when I first, I didn't want to go back to school. I mean, I, I wasn't given, I was given an like, unlikely survival chance in the next five years. I didn't want to go back to Pitt. I didn't want to continue my education because I didn't see a point for it. But that's not, that's not what life's about. Life's about living and I wasn't living and I had to continue the fight, continue my future. And I'm glad I did it. It's the best thing I ever did. I would tell my parents and everyone, oh, I'm fine, but I wasn't. And I think it was because I didn't know how to deal with cancer. And it's, life does not prepare you for that. But I'm happy now to be sitting where I am to know what it's like to lose my life so I can learn how to get it back.